video's subject is hypertensive disorders in a pregnancy. Okay, so I'll start with the information that tells that blood pressure decreases in the first and second trimester. Okay, so blood pressure in pregnancy increases in the first and second trimester. What about the third trimester? It increases, but not above the baseline. It increases just to a baseline. Okay, and if it exceeds that baseline, then we have hypertension disorder in pregnancy. Okay, so this is in normal physiology of pregnancy. Blood pressure decreases in first and second trimester and increases in the third trimester due to, of course, uh, hormonal changes, vasospasm, and vasodilation, and so on. Okay, so what do we mean by hypertension? Uh, pregnancy okay to diagnose uh, hypertension okay in general you have to have a blood pressure that exceeds 140 <coughs> 140 40 over 90 okay and this blood pressure should be taken sitting position sitting position because in other positions like lateral decubitus position the blood pressure will decrease and one of the maneuvers of the treatment of high blood pressure is to make the patient sit in lateral decubitus uh, position because blood pressure decreases and for example in supine positions the blood pressure may increase in some patients and may decrease on others due to compression on inferior vena cava so the right position to take the blood pressure is sitting position okay they should be two readings with six hours apart from uh, each other okay so if i uh, take the blood pressure this hour then i have to wait more than six hours to take the other reading to diagnose hypertension okay so let's now move to classification of hypertension we have actually two major big classif uh, types of hypertension the chronic the chronic hypertension that is not related to pregnancy and the hypertension diseases that uh, are related to pregnancy and the hypertension disease that related to pregnancy are the gestational hypertension the preeclampsia the most important okay and the main bulk of hypertension disorders in pregnancy and eclampsia okay and the next two videos I'm going to talk about chronic hypertension and gestational hypertension and eclampsia okay but in this video I'm going to talk about preeclampsia by the way we have a preeclampsia that is superimposed on chronic hypertension it is another type of the pregnancy related hypertension okay let's just talk about preeclampsia what is the definition of preeclampsia it is the a syndrome okay that is unique to pregnancy and we have uh, told that uh, that we have uh, these diseases hypertension related to pregnancy like preeclampsia gestational hypertension all these that are related to pregnancy okay so if the uh, hypertension occurs in other time than pregnancy then uh, it will never be called a preeclampsia okay so it's syndrome that is unique to pregnancy requires the following criteria the following criteria first of all we have to have a new onset increases in blood pressure or a new onset hypertension what type of increasing blood pressure above 140 to 90 diastolic okay 146 stroke and over 90 diastolic blood pressure okay this is the first one thing to uh, diagnose uh, preeclampsia the second thing is a protein urea protein in urine okay and what is a protein urea here is above 300 milligram per 24 hour collection of urine 300 milligram or plus one or plus two on the basic test okay plus one or plus two on the basic test or over than uh, over 300 milligram 24 hours okay and the third thing that we have to have to diagnose preeclampsia is 
that the increasing blood pressure should exceed the 20 weeks 20 weeks because because if it is before 20 weeks then we have to think about other uh, risk uh, other uh, preeclampsia that uh, is super uh, superimposed in gestational trophoplastic diseases like molar pregnancy okay and choriocarcinoma for example they predispose for uh, preeclampsia that uh, just before 20 20 weeks of gestations okay so uh, the, to diagnose preeclampsia should be uh, more than 20 weeks okay protein urea uh, 324 hours or plus one plus two in breast tag. a new onset increase in blood pressure that is above 140 uh, over 90 okay now the the, the the divisions of preeclampsia according to severity are severe and mild preeclampsia severe and mild preeclampsia mild preeclampsia actually is on the, these characteristics okay proteinuria blood pressure without any other added things okay but severe preeclampsia we have other things for example severe preeclampsia could be diagnosed with any one of these things I'm going to mention okay if we have any of them then we have severe preeclampsia the first one is the blood pressure that is over 160 to 110 okay 160 to 110 so we said uh, the nor uh, the blood pressure to, uh, to diagnose preeclampsia is over 140 to 90 but if we want to diagnose severe preeclampsia <coughs> According to blood pressure, it should be above 160 over 110 diastolic. Okay, this is the first one. The second one is a heavy protein urea. Heavy protein urea. What do we mean by heavy protein urea? Protein urea that is above 500 milligram in 24 hours, or more than three plus three and on the basic. The third thing to diagnose severe preeclampsia we may uh, that we may have is what is called HELP syndrome HELP syndrome HELP syndrome actually uh, the H just uh, goes for hemolysis the EL elevated liver enzymes and the LB is low platelets low platelets so if we have the, this HELP syndrome then we can diagnose severe uh, preeclampsia hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelets thrombocytopenia i'm going to get into details of help syndrome just in, uh, in the next video inshallah okay so if we have help syndrome then we have severe preeclampsia and the final thing is some symptoms that may be uh, associated with the preeclampsia uh, the presence of one or more of these symptoms is a severe preeclampsia let's start from head to toes okay so from the head cerebral or visual disturbances due to the generalized vasospasm that occurs in the preeclampsia cerebral or visual disturbances pulmonary edema or cyanosis pulmonary edema or cyanosis this is in the chest and the abdomen right upper quadrant pain okay right upper quadrant pain actually is associated with help syndrome with health syndrome we have right upper quadrant pain okay so cerebral visual disturbances pulmonary demorosinosis right upper quadrant pain the abdomen okay and the urinary system oligoyuria below 500 milligram in 24 hours okay so below than 500 is oligoyuria and in the next video i'm going to talk about why do we have oligoyuria in the preeclampsia okay fetal growth restriction also uh, fetal growth restriction and help syndrome finally okay just uh, put it on uh, help syndrome because of its importance okay so uh, the symptoms of help syndrome would be right upper quadruped thrombocytopenia uh, hemolysis jaundice okay elevated liver enzymes and rarely we have a liver rupture and we will talk about this in uh, these things in the next video okay these are the classifications of mild and severe preeclampsia 
when do we call it severe, when do we call it mild preeclampsia, just take care of them, okay? And uh, in the next video, inshallah, I'm going to talk about the, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, pathophysiology and the etiology of preeclampsia. So thank you very much. See you in the next video. Thank you.